Hey, what is going on everybody? This is Andy Pride back with Milk and Cookies Total War, and today, finally, Rome 2 has arrived, and I am going to be bringing you my first replay commentary. I've only played three games so far. It's very different than Shogun 2. I don't know what it is about the game. It feels very different, but I like it a lot. It's fun. It's definitely a fun game. I've really enjoyed the games I've played so far, but I want to get into this replay commentary right now because I thought this was a pretty decent battle, and because I just want to show off the Swaby, which is one of, I think, one of the coolest factions in the game. I don't know that I'll do a campaign with them. Me and Mana still haven't decided what we're going to be doing for our co-op campaign yet, but I do want to go over this replay here. So, this was a replay I just played maybe like 15 minutes ago against Richmond. He was Rome, I was a Swaby and we can go over army compositions right now. So I had three Wodenaz Spears, pretty decent spear unit for the Germanic faction, uh, three Longbow Hunters, they're an average archer unit, three Berserkers, which I think are the most badass looking units in the game. I mean, seriously, just take a look at these guys, absolutely awesome. And then uh, also three Swordmasters, which are very good sword unit, and then three Noble Riders, and my opponent, Richmond has five or six legionnaires. Uh, I believe he has four Praetorian cavalry that's, that are hidden right now. Some three Triarii backing up his legionnaires. Pretty awesome looking unit right there. And then he has a general's bodyguard and some auxiliary Syrian archers as well. And some, I think he has some Villates as well. So let's get into this replay right now. And I, one thing that's really cool about this game so far that I've really been enjoying is the uh, map. The, how you can pick any map you want. Like I don't know exactly what they call it, um, but it's basically a map selector, and it allows you to play on any any map you want. Really, like you just click on an overview of the campaign map, and you basically just zoom down to that location and fight on it. So this was a pretty interesting map right here. I think it's a little imbalanced because the deployment zone for them actually spreads out to right here on the other side, so if he wanted to, he could have just camped the hill, but he was a nice opponent and decided not to do that, so I was pretty happy about that. But <laughs> the first thing that I wanted to do right here was get my Noble Riders, which are a really, really powerful cab unit, and I wanted to get them up this hill. At the start of the battle, I had seen that he had two Praetorian Cav hidden behind that hill, and he has two hidden in the forest over there. So I wanted to act like I maybe didn't know that his cavalry was there, and so I kind of bait with these two cab units right here and have him, I don't know, kind of pretend like... I don't know they're there, so maybe he'll think, oh, I can get a downhill charge on these cab units. Instead, I'm going to circle these two cab units around behind, and then bring these two around. And I want to make sure that I don't run up this hill. If I had charged up this hill right here, could have gotten a great downhill charge and maybe wiped out two cab units right off the bat. So I decided to not let him do that, and we're going to go into a cab fight right here. So get a nice charge off on his Praetorian cab, and we're going to enter a cavalry fight here. So. I obviously have the advantage here. We don't have chevrons. I don't think he has chevrons in his Praetorian cab, and I don't have chevrons in my Noble Riders, but I have four where he only has two. So, gonna get a charge off here. That wasn't a great charge. I probably should have circled around, but I am gonna circle around with this one. And, get, uh, I suck with the camera. Just bear with me, guys. It'll take a little bit to get used to. Um, and I'm gonna get a rear charge off here. And one thing I've noticed so far is that Infantry and cavalry engagements, basically any melee engagement, lasts for a lot longer in Rome 2 than it did in Shogun 2. Uh, I get a back charge here, and whereas in Shogun 2, these Praetorian cab probably would have routed right off the bat. Instead, they're going to stay and fight for a long time. Now, I am going to win this cavalry engagement easily. I have four cab units to his two, and he's completely surrounded. I do see that he takes his other two Praetorian cavalry out of hiding and he's going to start moving up his legionnaires. And I don't want to start an engagement yet until I can wipe out this cavalry over here. So we are going to finish this cavalry off first before we enter into melee combat with my infantry units. Get some nice close-ups here. This game looks absolutely fantastic. So yeah, I'm going to get one more rear charge off here. And that should be it for these Praetorian Cav. So at first, with my infantry line, I'm going to retreat to this hill. I kind of want him to attack me here. If he decided to attack here, even though he might have a melee advantage, I'm not sure, I feel like he would definitely lose an infantry engagement if he 
decided to attack me on this hill. But I definitely think I have the skirmish advantage. He has a couple levies, auxiliary, and actually I don't know what the stats are for these units. I believe they're pretty similar to my longbow hunters. But I, I think that I have, I possibly have the skirmish advantage. And I definitely have the cavalry advantage now. Right here you can kind of see the line of sight. They, When you first start seeing them, they kind of look grayed out, but then as they finally crest the hill and you actually get full view, then you can actually tell that they're there. And these guys are fading out of view right there. So there are three tree, tree REI there, but I'm going to lose sight of those in a couple seconds here. I know where they are though. And it looks like right here I'm going to commit to a fight. So right here I noticed that he has some exposed auxiliary Syrian archers, and I'm going to take advantage of that. I believe I have my noble riders. Noble rider as well. I'm the guys. It's like five in the morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have my noble rider circle around, circle around, and then I see that they're open for an attack. So I'm gonna get some volleys off with my archers, and then I'm going to send in my noble riders and try to take those off the field. So we're gonna enter a little skirmish engagement here. He's gonna get a fire or a fire volley off on my. Loading as spears. These are not heavily armored units, so they definitely take uh, losses from archer units. But I really love that animation, actually. I hadn't noticed that before. They raise their shields when they're under archer fire. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna get a charge here. Watch some archers go flying, and those guys are gonna run off the field. So I quickly want to get these guys out of melee combat, though. I don't want them to get stuck or bogged down. He does have plenty of units that can deal with uh, cavalry, and that's mostly the Triari, Triari or spirit units, so obviously they destroy cavalry in melee. And right here, he's going to send his Praetorian Cav up the middle here, and kind of lose micro there, like lose track of them, so I'm going to send my modernized spears to screen my infantry advance and send in my noble riders and I definitely want to tie these guys down. If I can get these guys off the field, I'll have complete cav superiority and as soon as that happens this battle's gonna be really in my grasp. A nice charge off there. This Praetorian Cavern is taking a lot of losses here. And backed up by my Warden as Spears, they're gonna be in real trouble. And so one thing you don't really want to do is attack Legionnaires from the front. They are extremely effective from the front, maybe not as effective as like a pike unit or a hoplite unit, but definitely don't want to attack them from the front if you can avoid it. So I'm going to kind of shift my units over to one side and make him force to face one side and keep some of my other units like my berserkers over here and then attack from the flank. If I can get him facing multiple directions, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. So I'm going to have my berserkers charge in they're going to be able to start doing some damage in melee. So now I have him kind of surrounded and engaged on multiple flanks. I think I'm doing a pretty decent job of surrounding him here. I'm going to send some more cavalry over around this flank, and a lot of his guys are wavering at the moment. But at this point, this battle can still go either way. And I just noticed that there are a bunch of ranged units here that are either wavering, or that I can quickly take off the field with some charges for my noble riders. So it's gonna get pretty hectic here, actually. Um, and, oh, I didn't actually realize the tug of cinematic mode is there, so I can still use cinematic mode, that's cool. There we go. Let's watch these guys get a charge on. It's, I actually don't think they're gonna turn that So I'm just gonna go out of that for now. And I have them on the run, pretty much. But a lot of these guys, they have routed, but they're going to start coming back. So it's actually going to be kind of frustrating for me. So I'm going to get a lot of these guys off, off the field, but they're just going to come right back and make it a little bit more difficult for me. But let's uh, go back to cinematic mode because I'm going to get a charge off on these legionnaires in the middle here. These guys are really slow. It's definitely one thing I've noticed about this game. The pace is a lot slower than it was in I don't know how much slower it is, I haven't played enough battles to- Oh god, this is so awesome. <laughs> so I'm not exactly sure how much slower it is, but the melee engagements last a lot longer. I think that's a really good thing. I think that's a lot of fun to watch these guys just grinding out in melee. So my Swordmasters are pretty evenly matched with the Legionnaires, but considering that I have the numerical advantage, I think it should be good for me. And then I'm going to get a great charge off with my melee from the rear, and they're going to 
but this battle is still not over yet. I thought that I had won at this point, but you look and his guys start coming back. He's got Legionnaire's half strength right here that's coming back, and he's going to start retreating some of his range units to the top of the hill. So I was thinking about just regrouping. I don't want to press too far forward. Like, my guys are getting taken fire out of volleys, and I don't really want that to happen. So I was thinking about just retreating under the cover of my shields. But... I realized he only has range units pretty much at this point. Like, he has a couple legionnaires left, but I don't want to just expose my guys to more archer fire by retreating. So pretty soon here, I think, I believe, I turn around and start attacking up the hill. I don't want to attack piecemeal, though. That's the worst thing you can do in this situation. If you're ever winning a battle, and you see that they start to take a terrain advantage, like up on that hill, don't attack with like two of your units and then let the rest of yours clean up the other part of the battle. Like you wanna make sure that your arm is together because the morale penalties and the flanking penalties start kicking in when you leave guys exposed without any backup. So I'm still trying to clean the legionnaires off the field. I think I didn't notice them right away. One thing that I have noticed is that it's really, sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference between the factions. Like, look at Rome's banner and you look at Swebby's banner, they're pretty similar actually. And so that's why the button in the middle of the interface uh, when you're playing in the battle is really good. You can kind of, it'll, it'll highlight your guys in yellow and enemies in red. So I, I usually click that a couple of times to just see um, what's happening. Entering melee here. Legionnaires really can't win this. They'll be able to last for a little bit, but they can't beat my sword masters in melee. And that guy just got stabbed in the neck. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer up here. There we go. Cinematic cam is fun. So yeah, these Legionnaires are about to route, and it's at this point that I decide that I'm going to commit the rest of my melee troops to these archers and villetes on the hill. And I'm going to flank with these noble riders here. He is going to get a downhill charge into my Berserkers. But Berserkers are really fantastic in melee and they'll be able to last while I have my Noble Riders flank. So it's at this point that it's pretty much GG. I mean, I have a cavalry unit coming up behind all those archers. You really can't defend against it. And even though I'm attacking uphill, I should still be able to clean this up. Because... Oh god, he just got stabbed in the face. And the Villatees are going to route, and my Noble Riders are going to get in the middle here and be able to clean up the rest of this battle. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought this was a really fun battle, and I mean, man, this game looks amazing, and I had so much fun playing it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Obviously, tons more Rome content coming soon, and this will probably go up tonight. Uh, I'm really tired, but I'm probably going to keep recording because I'm having a lot of fun. So I'll talk to you guys later, and see ya.